Oh, man. Okay, now it's like Tachiendo, one of the other protagonists. Let's follow Achi's story for a little while. <clears throat> Achi. Ashiendo cut out at the door to his father's room. Okay, I'm heading out. Sure. His father sounded unconcerned. He didn't even open the door. Sure you don't want me to stay here in the shop? It's not like we're gonna get any customers. I just grimaced. Yeah, I guess not. The drawer by the front door held a stack of heavy-duty trash bags. Ashi pulled a few of them out. Guess it's gonna be that kind of day. <clears throat> He slipped the trash bags into his pocket and slipped on his favorite pair of sneakers. Entry to Achi's home also led into the family shop. Various pieces of electronics were piled up like so much junk in the tiny retail space. The slightest bump brought the risk of an avalanche. Achi wove his way through the gaps in the appliances like a spelunker, splunker cave. From Shibuya Station, if you make your way past the 109 building and up through uh, Daganzaka, you'll come across an old shopping district. Nestled in the outskirts of is Endo Electronics, and the same place has been for decades. Within its dimly lit interior, you'll find rows of wares all caked in dust. At a glance, you might well assume the place was closed. A mom and pop place like Endo's couldn't compete with the big consumer chains booming throughout Shibuya. So far, the store, store had remained in business thanks to the locals who appreciated that they made house calls to do repairs. But things weren't looking good for the future. Achi, the eldest son, a nominal success of the business, had no interest whatsoever in working there. Achi stepped out of the shop and into the sunny morning air. The good weather lifted his spirits. Alrighty, time to do this. He unfurled one of the big garbage bags which caught the wind and fluttered like a cape. Then he slowly made his way towards Shibuya Station, scanning his surroundings all the while. Sheesh, this place is filthy. He paused to pack, pick up a plastic bottle that had been tossed on the ground. And with a heavy sigh, he slipped the crushed receptacle into his trash bag. I've been picking up trash around town like this for about six months now. It had gone so that the sort of garbage most people would hardly notice stood out to him like a sore thumb. Most days he'd fill his trash back to the top by the time he made it from his house in Daganzaka to the train station. Today he was halfway to the station when a woman's anxious voice caught his attention. I'm sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry here. He looked up and saw a timid looking woman being confronted by two men, one with brown hair and one with black. From the look of them, he guessed that the men were scouts for some hostess club. He ran to this sort of thing pretty frequently on his trash cleaning walks around town. Another kind of trash to take care of. Achi quickly interposed himself between the girl and the two recruiters. Hey, can't you see that you're bothering her? Huh? Who the hell are you? The two men glared. Take a hike, pal. Achi stood his ground. Look, she ain't interested. You're just gonna have to find some other mark. Master's annoyance turned to open rage. Well, well, listen to you. Got a bit of a mouth, huh, buddy? The brown-haired thug smacked his lips around his chewing gum like a dog wearing a, worrying a bone. How about we take this someplace more quiet, yeah? <laughs> what this <laughs> means can depend on the person speaking. To a woman, let's go someplace more quiet. It might suggest a cafe or a park, but to a street punk, it might mean an out. The girl stood by and was watching the goings-on. Hey, take it easy. I'm not looking for trouble. Is that supposed to be an apology? On your knees and beg, pal. The man spat his gum into the ground. Achi looked down at the glistening wad of gum on the sidewalk. His last shred of goodwill vanished. You better pick that up. Right now. What? Didn't you hear me? Because I told you to get down on your knees and... Haji's <laughs> hands shot out, grabbing the man by the jaw. Whoa, whoa, easy, pal. The other man's bravado drained from his face. Whoa. Archie tightened his grip to the, on the brown hairdresser's jaw. 
Sweat dripped on the man's redening brow. The man struggled, but Achi just tightened his grip. Comes a real pain in the ass to clean up after it's gotten stuck on the street, you know. Ever, ever stopped to consider that? Wait, are... Are you? The other Hester's panic eyes had fixed on Achi's chest. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. That's it, man. The guy's voice is starting to break. That's mean clean. A guy with a mean clean shirt carrying around a trash bag. That means you're... His face went pale. Ugh. Mean clean. The other man echoed the words through his held shut jaw, tears reeling up in his eyes. <laughs> Get it right, pal. Hachi clenched the man's jaw harder still. It's mean clean. Ow, 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 ow. We're, we're sorry, man. You're Hachi, right? Dude, we honestly had no idea. Come on, man, you gotta cut us some slack. The man scrambled to snatch the wad of gum off the street, stuffing it into his pants pocket. Finally, Hachi let go of his companion. Brown haired hustler's face was twisted up with fear, tears streamed down his cheeks. Gasping out hasty apologies, the two thugs scampered off. Um, hey, so. A shy smile came to the girl's face. Ryoko Kakinuma, a second year student at Midoriyama Academy's Law School. These hustlers managed to corner her while she was on her way to her part time job at a cafe. It's popular to plot and trashy novels for the main character to fall in love. Well, that's like these guys, but such things really happen in real life. Thank you for saving me. No, I apologize. Huh? The girl stared in surprise. You run into creeps like that now and then, but don't hold that against us. Shibuya is a good town. Uh, yeah, okay. I actually gave her a quick wave, then turned and continued on his way down to Dog and Zaka. Hachi was Shibuya born and raised. He was keenly aware of all the changes the ward had seen since he was a kid. Grocers, stalls, and conspicuous little side streets, tiny parks nestled between buildings, Hachi knew it all like the back of his hand. Trash, human, or otherwise had no place in this town, not on his watch. Hachi made his way down towards Shibuya Station. Throngs of people shuffled to and fro across the scramble. A view shifted constantly from one moment to the next, almost as if the city itself were alive. And if the city was a living thing, then Shibuya Station was his heart. With streets like Bunkamura Dori and center guys serving as the arteries pumping a bloodstream made of people. Today as ever, the heart was pumping that blood to every nook and cranny of Shibuya. And there was Achi, just another part of this great urban organism. I guess I'm one of the city's white blood cells. Or wait, maybe I'm a red blood cell. Hmm. Hold on. Is that right? Or did I have it right the first time? <laughs> white blood cells eliminate pathogens from the bloodstream. Red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body. Hachi was probably thinking of white blood cells. Yep. <laughs> Emerging from his reverie, he noticed a rather conspicuous young woman standing by the statue of Hachiko outside Shibuya Station. Ooh, she's totally my type. To be up someone's alley, to be someone cup the tea. I wonder if she's a model or a small time actress or something. Looks like she's waiting for someone. Probably another guy. Dang. Good looking as she was, there was no way she wasn't already taken. What kind of guy squared a girl like that? Probably the rich ass CEO of an IT company or something. Crashing down to tie off the trash bag, he continued gazing wistfully at the girl, then he noticed something peculiar. She was carrying an attache case, the kind of businessman might use. It was a large case, and apparently so heavy that she was struggling to hold it despite using both hands. Now, what kind of person makes a young lady lug around something heavy like that? Achi figured he'd offer to carry it for her. You reached the decision point. Let's have Achi not approach it, Tommy. Use down, up, down, select an option, and press X. But first, I gotta dump this trash. I looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Uh, first, I gotta dump this trash. I looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Now, I actually won't approach Otomi, which means he will avoid being arrested by Kano. At the same time, Kano's fate will be also changed. And he will no longer wind up at a bad end. So let's switch back to Kano's story using the time chart. We're trying to open it. Just like that. Just like that. 
This is the time chart. It shows the protagonist's progression. Through the story, decision points are marked with left and right. Okay. Kano's fate has changed based on Achi's actions. Hold on. I'm gonna check something. Hello? I forgot to check. Alright. Kano's fate has changed based on Achi's actions. Select Kano's 1030 block, then press X. Suspicious man, you say? I suppose you could call it that. Can I give a ride chuckle at his partner's lack of shame? There he is! Kuz's voice chirps suddenly through Kano's earpiece. The man in the black coat, he's not Japanese, looks to be in his early 30s. Previously, Achi got mixed up with Kano in the place, but now another man has appeared instead by changing what Achi did. And you've also changed Kano's story. A foreign man had emerged from the crowd about 15 feet from where Hitomi was standing. He made his way toward her, his expression blank. Yeah, that matched the description Hitomi had given them, but Kano felt a jolt of nerves all the same. Maybe the kidnapper was using an accomplice to snatch the ransom payment. Alright, Sasayama raised an eyebrow. This might be our guy. This was it. Kano swallowed the lump in his throat. He bent his knees, ready for action. Blood rushed to his leg muscles, banishing. Stiffness that had begun to take hold. Was this the culprit? Or perhaps... The stranger took hold of the touch -a case. It was him! <laughs> and mass detectives began to close in! Let's go, Kano! On it! The Zayama and Kano leapt into action. But they never expected what happened next. With the case clutched in both arms, the man veered suddenly running right toward them. Keep out. Okay. <laughs> Kano's story has suddenly hit a keep out. Keep out refers to a point in the story where your progress is currently stopped. In order to advance beyond a keep out, you need to jump from another protagonist story at 10.30. Achi has the text. Young man in a suit set as red keywords. Checking these. Red keywords will allow you to jump from Machi's story back to Kano's. Now head back to Achi's story and keep an eye out for that. Key phrase. Good. Try following the story from Achi at 10.30. Approach the girl. I mean, a choice, but it doesn't really matter. Take a while to get used to. Uh, press up to go back and reread sections you've already played through. To scroll ahead through text you've already read. Press down or rewinding advancing like this. A uh, book will sometimes appear in the upper left corner. Press X while this is being displayed to reread the current page. Gotta dump this trash, looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Huh? Man had come up beside the girl. He was dressed in black and he wasn't Japanese. It looked like they were having a conversation. The girl nodded intensely at something the man said. Actually stared. Something tells me that's not her boyfriend. The girl handed a touch case over to the man. He took hold of it with his right hand and began walking briskly away. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> a nearby homeless man suddenly leapt over Achi and broke into a run, as if he'd been waiting for this very moment. Yuji Sasayama detected with the Shibuya precinct known as the cosplay detective. Due to the strange outfits he wears while on stakeouts, he's partnered with Shunya Kano for their kidnapping investigation. Sprinting alongside him was a young man in a suit. Some words in the text appear in red. Red text denotes important keywords that let you jump between different protagonists. Stories, this allows you to shift between characters at specific points. These can also allow you to clear out a keep out in another character's story and let you read on. If you come across red text, press square to line and then press X. 
window up here allowing you to jump from one protagonist to another at that point. Then press X to continue. The other character's story after the keep out, give it a try. By performing a jump from the screen, you can advance another protagonist story past the keep out. Press X to confirm and jump over to Kano's story. Jump. Jumping in. Let's go, Kano. On it. This is the Yaman Kano leapt into action. You did it. Jump successful. In 428, you will often need to jump to get past another character's keep out. Jump from red keyboards to clear keep out. Keep this in mind as you advance through the story. Okay, there won't be any more. Tutorial messages for a while. If you get stuck somewhere, try changing protagonists or making different decisions to advance. You can now use the time chart and the main menu. From the main menu, you can access gameplay explanations and adjust settings. Press triangle to open the time chart and options to open the main menu. Siyama and Kano left into action, but they never expected what happened next. With the case clutched in both arms, the man suddenly veered, running right toward them. What? Catching sight of the two detectives, the suspect staggered to a halt and bolted off in a new direction. Kano whipped off his costume glasses and followed in hot pursuit. At the crosswalk, the signal changed to red and the flow of foot traffic abruptly halted. Just as quickly, hundreds of cars all lurched back into motion. There's no escape for the culprit now, or so it appeared. The converging cops slowed their pace, confident their man was cornered. Then the foreigner barreled straight into the intersection, dodging between the oncoming cars without any hesitation. The mob of detectives came to a halt, not eager to rush to their deaths along with them. Kano, however, remained in hot pursuit, charging into the traffic at the crossing. Kano, are you crazy? Come back! Kano heard Sasayama shouting, but his feet kept carrying him onward. The shouts and sirens echoing all around him, Kano closed in on the foreigner. Just a little closer. Just a little closer and he'd be in track tackling range. He leaned forward, praying to pounce, his eyes fixed on the culprit's feet. It was now or never. Kano, back off! Don't take him down! It was Kuze shouting through Kano's earpiece. Huh? Kano has a different surprise. Had he really just been ordered not to apprehend the criminal? Let him go for now, the real purpose someplace else. Purposely jargon for a perpetrator. Here, Kuze is referring to the fact that the principal offender in the case must be elsewhere. What had happened to the plan? He'd been told that all personnel were to secure the area ASAP. Didn't HQ want them to catch the perpetrator? The rest of the team stay on the foreigner's tail. Police team dedicated exclusively to the task of apprehending the criminal. While the kidnapping case is in progress, the roles of the officers involved are carefully designated so that. Every officer is ready to take immediate action as the situation develops. Typically, tried and true veteran MPD officers are put in charge of teams for breaking into buildings or apprehending the suspect. Forensics team get busy cross-referencing photos. Team deployed by the MPD to handle the actual tests and techniques of on-scene investigations, such as collecting and comparing fingerprints and analyzing photos of suspects. Even if this foreigner was only an underling hired for this one task, the police had now tipped their hand that they had been lying in wait. If they did lock things down now and get more info on the kidnapper, a girl's life might be at stake. Kano recalled another maxim from his dick diary. Dick dictum number 12. Always assume a worst case scenario. If Kuze had told him to let this guy go, that implied he was counting on the team that was now in position. But if the crook had planned a way to break through the police dragon and escape with a ransom and he succeeded, what was the right call here? Should he take this guy down or back off after all? I think the purpose keep now is too big of a risk as to catch this guy ASAP. Letting the other officers chase after the guy Kano had his own job to do. Follow orders? I'm going with follow orders. Ah, there's a bad ending list. <laughs> this is the list of bad endings. You can check for hints. As to why, why things ended as badly as they did. Oh man. So long, Shibuya. No, he still doesn't have to do it, right? Uh, so many bad endings. <laughs> oh, it even tells me what I read.
Oh. I don't think I know this one. Personal health extra automatically advance for as long as the button is held. You can still read tips. And jump while advancing or rewinding through text. The time chart allows you to easily switch between different hours. Within the story, check the control explanation while the time chart is being displayed for more details. It's not a play. Um, if they were talking, I would definitely do autoplay since I have to read it. It's like, I'm good. They follow orders. The other officers chase after the guy Kano had his own job to do. His instructions had been clear. Let the other officers chase after the guy Kano had his own job to do. He broke off his pursuit, pointing the next wave of detectives in the direction of the foreigner had fled. Kano had almost gotten close enough to get a good look at the guy's face, but if Kuze had ordered him to let the guy go, well, his boss should know what he was doing. The perp was someone else's problem now. He had just ceased his pursuit when Kuze's panicked voice sounded shrill in his ear. Yep, someone's taking it to me. Oh shit. Kane organized Kuzi's trademark squawking <laughs> immediately. Subject is male. He appears to be carrying a gun. He's fleeing in the direction of Meiji Dori. What? Kano could hardly believe it. He told me he had been kidnapped. Had she been abducted by whoever had taken Maria? But why? Someone must have been waiting for the moment when the police took their eyes off her. Something is very wrong here. What in the world is going on? Kano hurried to search for the man who had taken Hitomi. If he was heading toward Meiji Dori, there was a good chance he'd gone down one of the alleyways nearby. After darting through the side streets, he spotted a different man and another foreigner crossing an intersection a few dozen meters ahead. The man was dressed in black, just like the guy who grabbed the ransom money. Who's his right? The kidnapper wasn't acting alone. But wait, something was amiss. The Tommy was isn't with him. Where was she? Kano skidded around the corner and then stopped short. Oh shit, the man in black was standing there pointing a gun right at him. Before Kano could react, the man fired. Kano felt hot all over as if he were on fire. All except for his cheek pressed against the asphalt on the palms of his hands. They felt so, so cold. There was nothing he could do. Nothing that is except lie there and watch as his killer turned and walked away. Ding! Bad end. Number four, shot by a foreigner. By trying to find the man who had taken Hitomi, Kano ran into a different criminal, and unfortunately for him, he got shot. If the criminal hadn't been able to get near Hitomi, she probably wouldn't have been taken. Havachi make the choice to talk to Hitomi instead at 